excited to introduce Dr. Dario Taraborelli. He's with uh, Wikimedia, and um, I uh, believe that all of you at the end of his uh, talk will be fascinated, just as you were fascinated by yesterday's speakers, because he's a member of a community that we don't really uh, engage a lot, but if you ask Ted Lois, who's the guy for everything, I guess. He's also worked uh, with uh, data from uh, Wikidata uh, to enhance the journals uh, publications that we wanted to we want to use it in Open Vivo. So um, Dario's work has been uh, featured in uh, the Guardian, uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, and now here at the Vivo 16 conference, can you believe that? <laughs> we are so fortunate and I'm happy to uh, hand over the podium to Dario. Please help me welcome Dario. So very excited to be here today. Um, thanks a lot to the organizers. Uh, this is an incredible opportunity for me to talk to you about something that's not really part of my daily duties at Wikimedia, but something I've been passionate about for uh, at least 10 years. So uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is a nonprofit that runs Wikipedia and a number of sister projects. And at Wikimedia, I run the research team. So we're a team of uh, research scientists, design researchers, software engineers, developing new technology and, and new products that are using um, research methods to support our communities and our readers. Um, but this work and uh, what I'm going to talk about today is really part of something that I'm not really spending much time as part of my professional duties at the foundation, but it's something that I've been really passionate about for a while and that lies at the intersection of my interests uh, between open collaboration, um, commons-based collaboration on the one hand, and the making and representation and dissemination of scientific knowledge on the other hand. Um, and I thought that I would start um, by introducing him prob this problem, but by looking at something that happened in Wikipedia over the course of the past 15 years that we didn't quite anticipate in the beginning. So um, a quick three bullet history of Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia started back in 2001 as uh, simply a website that anyone could edit, right? So this revolutionary piece of technology called the wiki that would allow people to write, read and write on the web, something amazing uh, by the standards of uh, 2001. Um, and over time, Wikipedia obviously evolved to a multi-language online encyclopedia. Uh, started off in English and uh, over the years, started covering more and more languages. We have uh, um, about 290 languages today that we support uh, across our projects. And the project grew exponentially over the years uh, and peaked in terms of uh, uh, contributions and, and, and traffic around 2007. And, uh, and today, uh, Wikipedia is just the largest reference work available on the internet. So it's a pretty amazing and unexpected uh, uh, achievement for humanity, really, um, that happened um, just by having communities and volunteers get together and contribute to this project. But it turns out that there's much more to Wikipedia than just being an online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Um, and I hope to show you today a few things that are not um, very often talked about about our projects and communities. So there's a few unintended outcomes of building an online encyclopedia that I think are particularly relevant for this audience. Um, one, accelerating the dissemination of scholarship. Two, enabling distributed fact-checking and the curation of uh, scientific knowledge, both by experts and by lay people and citizens. And third, supporting open scientific research. Now, okay, this is something that uh, if you squint at and you, know, you look at this for a while, you may think it's not Wikipedia's job. This should be maybe the scholarly publishing system's job. <laughs> but uh, this is a topic of a different talk, so I'm not going to spend more time here. So uh, back to our master plan. Um, 
This is the, uh, the itinerary of today's talk. I want to start by giving you a few more data about what Wikipedia means today for the dissemination of scholarship and scientific knowledge. And then I move on to talk about some of the least discussed aspects of the project. Um, I'll talk about uh, what I think is a new mode of uh, um, open knowledge creation and curation. And I give a brief introduction to Wikidata. And finally, I walk you through some of the most recent and to me most exciting developments uh, that we're investing into as a movement uh, around uh, issues such as sourcing and verifiability of linked open knowledge. Um, and specifically, I give you an overview of this vision of building an open bibliography and citation graph uh, built on top of Wikidata. And yeah, I'll finish by showcasing some applications and add some reassuring words to the generous sponsors of this event uh, that these projects are not meant to put them out of business yet. Okay. All right. So Wikipedia is a front matter to all research. Back in 2014, um, Cameron Nalen, who many of you certainly know, uh, famously called Wikipedia the front matter to all research. Um, I think it was a very it was a brilliant uh, intuition, uh, and in fact, just a few years earlier, the Chronicle defined the project as the highest layer of epistemic authority without formal vetting, which in this specific role can serve as the ideal bridge between the unvalidated and the validated web, basically peer-reviewed literature and everything else. And I found it very compelling, and again, that's something that was not really anticipated at the beginning of the project. And today we have some data to back that statement, which is pretty exciting. So uh, we know from our friends uh, at Crossref that Wikipedia accounts today for a very large share of DOI resolutions every month. In fact, it's among the top 10 sources of DOI resolutions that we're working with Crossref to try to understand how we can even improve the cross-linking between Wikipedia, DOIs, and, uh, and Crossref services. And given the sheer traffic that Wikipedia receives, um, if we look at a specific field of medicine, uh, we have some estimates that indicate that uh, uh, the um, 183,000 articles that currently we have uh, on health and medical related topics across uh, all our languages um, attract basically more traffic than NIH sites or uh, WebMD. Again, this is based on estimates that we uh, aggregated, uh, and there's a paper that goes over this data. So humanity mostly goes to Wikipedia to find about uh, these contents and follows um, references that are added to this site. This is something um, largely unanticipated and pretty mind-blowing. Mind and even in the context of uh, major public health uh, crisis, like the um, Ebola outbreak uh, in 2014, uh, Wikipedia provided a key role in providing access in local languages to information, often um, summarizing literature that is uh, paywalled, and making this information available in local languages to local population in the context of a major crisis like uh, the uh, Ebola outbreak. So back then, Wikipedia was the most used site um, in West Africa and received way more traffic uh, on these topics and sources like CNN, CDC, and, uh, and other institutional uh, websites. So I'm hoping this gives you a sense of uh, what Wikipedia means for the dissemination of, uh, of scholarship. Uh, there is, however, another aspect that we rarely talk about, um, and that's the role of Wikipedia as uh, the backbone of the uh, linked open data ecosystem. I don't know how many of you have seen this chart before. Um, this chart shows the position that DBpedia occupies uh, uh, inside the uh, linked open data ecosystem. So DBpedia, uh, in a nutshell, is focused on extracting knowledge primarily from Wikipedia's info boxes, so these tiny little panels you see uh, on the right-hand side of uh, most Wikipedia articles, and without human curation, basically using, using a series of algorithms, extract information from these info boxes and turning these into uh, a set of triples, basically, uh, making these available uh, under open licenses for everyone. Um, and by doing this, uh, DBpedia, so Wikipedia contents transformed into uh, semantic data, really represent the highest centrality node in the ecosystem of uh, linked open data. Um, and what you don't see here is obviously all the private knowledge graphs that use Wikipedia data. Uh, Google, Apple, Netflix, uh, uh, Yahoo, Microsoft, IBM, they're all scraping and ingesting this data to power their semantic search um, functionality. So 
This is fantastic. It's something we don't talk about enough. Um, but it also comes with a number of big challenges. Um, the first challenge I want to talk about uh, is biases and errors. The way in which DBpedia works is that um, it mechanically transforms human curated information into um, RDF, basically. And as you can imagine, any bias, misinformation, unverified statement that gets into the system uh, upstream not only gets into, into DBpedia, but is then propagated to the entire linked open data ecosystem. So there are major <laughs> implications uh, about uh, the quality and the verifiability of this data because it affects basically every single service that we use uh, nowadays uh, on the internet. Um, there's also much more content in Wikipedia than just in info boxes, um, and so there's an issue of, uh, of coverage that currently is not represented in, in DBpedia. And, and by and large, uh, the, the quality of any information we can find uh, in a triple store derived from, uh, from Wikipedia uh, is going to be the function of diversity and inclusiveness uh, and expertise of the community of curators uh, who generate the, the content upstream. So we need to have uh, curators, uh, both human and algorithmic, at each stage of the process in an ideal world. And finally, there needs to be a system by which we provide a transparent uh, and uh, an open uh, mechanism for verifying this information. So these are all the challenges that we face until today with the status quo of, uh, of DBpedia. And so the question is, uh, how can we build not just uh, an online encyclopedia, but a comprehensive knowledge base that one, is machine readable and complies with the standards um, set by the linked data uh, community, B, is designed to be edited and curated by anyone, experts and citizens and machines alike. Um, it can support uh, curation by all these different uh, uh, stakeholders, but also it expands its scope uh, beyond what Wikipedia calls a notable entry, right? So this needs to be really a comprehensive knowledge base about basically anything you can name um, without any domain specificity. And finally, like I said, it needs to be transparently verifiable. So we made some good progress on the first item, uh, and we're just starting uh, on the second one. So today I'm going to give you an overview of everything that's been done in these two areas, um, and hope to get you excited about uh, um, coming on board with this project. So a brief intro to Wikidata. How many of you have heard or used Wikidata in the past? Quick show of hands. OK, awesome, fantastic. So um, in a nutshell, Wikidata is a project we launched uh, uh, in 2012. It's actually a project that's been developed by the German chapter, uh, Wikimedia Deutschland. It was launched in 2012. Um, it's a free knowledge base that anyone can edit. So really think of Wikipedia applied to structured data. Uh, it's fully integrated into Wikipedia and our sister projects uh, at different layers, both at the um, um, human curation layer and the search layer. Um, and as of August 2016, the project is seeing uh, some pretty substantial growth. We have uh, about 20 million items at the moment uh, and over 100 million statements. And what's most inter interesting to me, uh, as uh, someone who studies engagement and online collaboration, is the uh, uh, the growth we've seen in the population of people uh, joining um, Wikidata. So. At the moment, we have in total across Wikimedia projects uh, something like uh, 80,000 active contributors, and we define active contributors as people completing at least five contributions per month. Um, English Wikipedia uh, has something around uh, uh, 30,000 um, active editors every month, and what you see here is the growth of Wiki, the Wikidata active edit population over time. So we have, uh, uh, let's say, about uh, 7,000 uh, people who every month make at least five contributions to Wikidata, so growing population of curators. And What's even more compelling is that if you look at the population of very active editors, these people who complete at least 100 edits per month, uh, the growth of Wikidata compared to other projects is even more impressive. And Wikidata, in a nutshell, uh, really functions in the, in, in the following way. Um, we have uh, items that basically represent uh, any concept that you can name. And the structure of an item is the following. Typically, you have uh, the item label, London in this case, uh, and some statement um, that you want to represent about this, this item, in this case, the population. 
and we have uh, um, additional um, elements in this data model, including qualifiers that can limit the scope uh, of the statement and references that can be attached to it. And Wikidata, by representing all these statements and the link between these items, is basically uh, representing the connection between any items you can think of. It's not domain specific, it's not limited to any specific domain of knowledge. It can cover anything from proteins to Barack Obama to current news to whatever potentially you can name. And to give you a sense of the data that we have, we have a, um, a live query system using a Sparkle interface, and these are just a few examples of what we have today. So you can browse uh, the paintings um, of a famous author, a famous painter, and get the associated uh, images that are open licensed uh, on Wikimedia Commons. You can look at the birthplace of people employed by a given university. And you can look, generate uh, um, trees of genealogy or uh, descendancies of any specific individual represented uh, in, in Wikidata. Now, the part that's most exciting to me is that uh, uh, Wikidata is not just about uh, uh, lay knowledge or popular topics, uh, it's also being used by and large by entire communities of curators to represent and store um, annotations of scientific data. The community I'm most excited about is the GeneWiki community. It's a community of bioinformaticians whose job is to basically represent uh, via open linked data repositories annotations that connect uh, the literature to information about uh, genes, diseases, proteins, uh, treatments, manifestations uh, of these diseases, hosts of viruses, et cetera, et cetera. So all information that can be extracted meaningfully from uh, this, body, this body of the literature. And they used to work with Wikipedia, basically annotating info boxes before Wikidata was born. And now they're basically, they shifted their attention to Wikidata and they're using Wikidata for this purpose. Generating an amazing body of uh, open licensed uh, data that is there to be reused by anyone and accessed via our Sparkle endpoints. And this is a, just a list of uh, queries that you can get today, um, thanks to the, uh, the curation that, uh, that this community is adding to Wikidata, getting a list of, uh, of diseases treated in specific ways, um, getting uh, a list of identifiers um, and evidence codes used uh, in, in Wikidata, getting all known drug-to-drug -drug interactions uh, uh, for a specific uh, uh, molecules. So these are all possibilities that uh, happen today. And you can just go and browse this data and, and start using it. Now, um, I want to step back for a second because uh, this is basically what's happening already. Um, but the, the part that most interests me is really the verification and refer referencing layer for this knowledge. Um, and I want to step back uh, and give you a sense of what's uh, happening uh, over the internet and some trends that I personally find uh, pretty concerning that keep me up at night. And I hope you get nervous too when you see these examples. Um, I, I gave this, this talk and, uh, uh, and this rant a couple of times uh, uh, about what I call the disappearance of provenance. Um, this is a good example of a result that you find if you Google um, the average uh, lifespan of a goat, right? So Google will return this fantastic, uh, concise result that gives you exactly information you're looking for. No source, no provenance information whatsoever. You just get the range, and you're happy, and you can go ahead uh, with this information, do whatever you want with it. Um, it turns out that this information is extracted from Wikipedia, and Wikipedia cites a source that is using this data. Um, but Google legitimately says, well, this information can be found uh, in one source, multiple other sources, and we're confident enough that we can share this information without any provenance. So that's an interesting take. Um, and if you think through the implications of this, you may realize that it might not be that critical when you're talking about a goat's um, lifespan, but think about information about the drugs, think about information about politics, think about information about policy, and what it means to have information is compiled by an answer engine that you cannot independently verify or look up in the internet. That's something we should all be concerned about as a society. And this is just becoming more and more 
common just because of the shift towards uh, voice interfaces, conversational agents, uh, mobile, like a big transition to mobile, is uh, one of the main reasons why answer engines and companies are shifting to this model. This is an example, a similar example of what you find asking Siri, how long do greyhounds live? Again, you get information from uh, Wolfram uh, Alpha, in this case, gives you all the information you're looking for, no source or information on, on the references whatsoever. And there's a pretty nice uh, uh, piece that was written just a few uh, weeks ago um, in the Washington Post about this precise issue that if you're interested, you can look up. So what's fascinating to me is that uh, if you go and check how these properties that basically are aggregating various sources of linked open data and generating these answers, if you go and check uh, how they handle source information, they're very upfront. And this is a, this is a note from Wolfram Alpha. Uh, if you scroll to the bottom and you want to see where this information comes from, they tell you, oh, this list is not intended to give you uh, a comprehensive link between any specific statement and a source. So please don't use, don't use it. It's just a courtesy that we give to you as a reader, uh, but uh, you should just uh, trust uh, the actual data that the answer engine returns, which I find fascinating um, as a strategy. And the best way of describing what this means is uh, uh, from a quote that, uh, from a brilliant piece that David Weinberger wrote in 2012, where he was noticing this uh, uh, widespread behavior from news websites and websites in general to um, link back to themselves and uh, not provide a linking to the actual sources they're talking about in an effort to uh, engage more their readers. Um, and they said that basically every source that is not generous with linking is a stopping point uh, in the ecology of information. And it shifts the definition of authority from pointing you to the right uh, sources you're looking for to pointing to yourself as the ultimate source of truth. Um, I think it's a brilliant way of, uh, of capturing this problem. And after we talked a little bit more about this issue, uh, he told me that uh, there's actually a beautiful pre precedent in human history for this specific uh, idea. So the notion of uh, uh, nicely concise the sum of facts that are presented without any source or provenance, and that's almanacs. So the beautiful thing is that humanity in 2016 is reinventing the almanac, and that's something that we should all be very excited about. Now, uh, there's one project uh, that works in a, in, a, in a slightly different way. Um, and as I think you all know, Wikipedia is not about uh, truth. It's about the verifiability of information. This is a very famous essay that is quoted very often um, and basically explains how on Wikipedia we try and give a, a fair representation of what reputable sources say about any given topic. Uh, you should not make, take this as a, as a truth. Ultimately, the value of Wikipedia is going to be in the, in the sources that we present and you can independently look up to form your own opinions. And this is what makes Wikipedia really stand out uh, as such an outstanding public service. It's not, Wikipedia is not an authority in itself, uh, but it's an entry point towards uh, uh, secondary sources that have been vetted, scholarly literature that has gone through peer review that you can trust. Now that we have this vision of Wikipedia potentially serving that function that is so much needed uh, uh, today, given what's happening on the rest of the internet, uh, we can think of what, how we can possibly combine Wikipedia with Wikidata and build not just the sum of all human knowledge, but the sum of all data um, structured as linked open data combined with sources that we can use to openly verify these statements. So this is the vision that we have for Wikidata, and some people came up with this brilliant idea that you know, in five years from now, the verb to Wikidata is gonna mean to look up a, a fact with literature provenance. Really like that, that syn synthetic uh, um, summary of what, what the value proposition of this project is. And again, Benjamin Good, in his uh, brilliant talk about uh, bio-curation using Wikidata, talks about computable trust. And the idea that uh, once we have the sources represented next to each statement, uh, we can do a lot more work to actually vet them, both with machines and humans, to understand uh, if we want to trust them, if we want to trust specific statements as a function of references that they use. 
So you might think we're doing a fantastic job at adding all this information in Wikidata and Wikipedia. The reality is that we're not. Uh, the situation is actually pretty horrible. Um, this is just a, a graph that shows you the distribution of statements we have in Wikidata as a function of, this, of the sources that I use. Um, so up to 77% of all statements we have uh, on Wikidata either have uh, no reference or use Wikipedia um, as, a, as a reference, which as you may think is not really ideal. So only 23% uh, of all statements uh, reference an external source. Uh, you can think of this like a tech, tech debt uh, for verifiability that we need to address somehow. And even if you look at the way in which uh, citations are structured in Wikipedia, uh, this is something that's been really blowing my mind for a while, that uh, citations should be the most important asset in Wikimedia projects. And over the years, we mostly invested into supporting freeform text and media files and geo-coordinates and not citations. So this is what currently a citation looks like. Uh, it's a, a template with freeform metadata uh, hard-coded into, into the text, into the body of an article. So there's no way you can manipulate this object uh, or structure it or extract some information from it. Um, we need to solve this problem. And how, how are we going to do this? Well, we thought that we could just uh, start bringing together communities who feel strongly about this problem uh, to start building the, uh, really the, 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 the um, foundational layer that's needed uh, to change how things are currently working. So uh, back in May this year, we organized this event in Berlin, uh, Wikisite. It was an event co-hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation and by our friends uh, at Wikimedia Deutschland. And it was generally supported by uh, Crossref, the Alfred Sloan Foundation, and the Moore Foundation. And the goal of this event uh, was really, like I said, to lay the foundations for building an open bibliographic uh, repository on top of Wikidata and adding the open citation layer on top of it and support this kind of curation between this kind of data and the knowledge we already have in the system. Um, this may sound like a simple uh, problem. Uh, in fact, it, invol it involves uh, all sort of issues around uh, data modeling and designing workflows that are working for human curators uh, as well as machines uh, and making sure that all the metadata uh, can be retrieved and maintained uh, um, accurately by looking up canonical sources like uh, Crossers API or uh, PubMed Central. So it's a very complex uh, challenge from a social and technical perspective. And we're, we're just starting. Um, but the, the great thing is that uh, this is an issue that for the past 10 years, the Wikimedia community has tried to address. So the idea of how to store and represent uh, all this body of sources that back the, uh, the, the largest uh, reference site of the, of the internet uh, is something we haven't been able to, uh, to do. And just, that was just because the, uh, the technology was not there. And today we have Wikidata, and Wikidata is, a, is the solution for a number of reasons. It has the vision, it has the existing technology, so we can basically start today uh, doing this work. It has a community of curators that is growing and is very committed. It has a scale. Um, that's something I wanna spend a few more words about. Um, Benjamin Good in his talk um, emphasized the fact that this is not like a, a one-off grant-funded project, right? It's not like a proof of concept is gonna go away. Wikidata has the same guarantee of stability of Wikipedia. It has the same guarantee of scale and accessibility and, and preservation that any, anything you can find on Wikipedia today um, is gonna have. It also have, uh, from a licensing standpoint, a very um, straightforward uh, approach to this data. We only support uh, in, in Wikidata data that is CC0 licensed. So no fancy licenses, it's just plain public domain data that we store in a project. And finally, and I think most importantly, uh, we have uh, independence from third parties and uh, uh, commercial interests, which given the fact that we live uh, in a world where the, especially the scholarly infrastructure is so influenced by big corporations uh, uh, and, and the publishers, having a project is independent and has a scale to provide uh, this kind of infrastructure, I think is really critical to the success uh, of what we're doing collectively. So Wikisite, um, we 
uh, we worked for two days with a group of about uh, um, 60 people, including librarians, uh, linked open data experts, uh, developers, uh, Wikidata, and software developers. And we identified all the directions that we need to work on in order to, um, to deliver this vision. And uh, I just want to call out uh, a few achievements that are me are particularly exciting. Um, so during that event, uh, we created for the first time uh, the property that represents a citation between any two documents. You would assume that that's the first thing that should exist in Wikidata. It turns out that it didn't exist until that point. So we created a property, and as of today, the property has been used uh, in over 350,000 statements uh, on Wikidata. And uh, we have uh, people like James Hare who are actively mining uh, the available data from the PubMed Central citation graph to enrich the statements that exist uh, in Wikidata. Uh, the second really exciting project we're working on in collaboration with the GeneWiki is what we call the Zika Corpus. Um, I'm sure you've seen like the incredible amount of attention that Zika and the Zika outbreak has been getting and how much the scholarly publishing and the scientific community have been thinking of ways to accelerate uh, discovery, discovery and also accelerate uh, the uh, identification of solutions to this problem. And we thought that we can put together like a small proof of concept that could showcase uh, the value of what Wikidata represents uh, uh, in this area. And we started working on what we call the Zika corpus. So the idea here is to have a, a corpus fully integrated uh, with open data that is uh, um, in the public domain consisting of four different layers. The first layer is the encyclopedic layer. So we have plenty of information on uh, Zika virus, on the, the disease, its um, uh, prevalence uh, of the hosts, plenty of data extracted from the literature that we host uh, uh, on, on commons. So this is like a standard encyclopedic layer that you would uh, navigate uh, on, on Wikipedia. But the idea is to integrate uh, the expert annotation layer. So the amazing people at the uh, GeneWiki community are extracting both using machines and human experts uh, all this information about uh, hosts, about uh, the prevalence of this um, uh, of, of the disease, uh, and connecting this data to the sources that, um, that, 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 that use it. And then we're also ingesting the bibliographic metadata layer. So we're basically creating items for every single paper published in history uh, about uh, uh, Zika virus. We're talking about uh, a fairly small corpus. Like uh, in total, there have been like a, a thousand papers um, published about, uh, about Zika. So it's a relatively small and manageable uh, use case that we can really fully curate uh, to release this data. And finally, we're also ingesting the uh, open citation uh, graph. So we're, we're working with a team at the Knowledge Lab at the University of Chicago to get data that we can confidently release uh, in the public domain uh, uh, to, to enrich this data set. So this gives you a sense of uh, uh, what the project could look like uh, if for a second, imagine we had access to all this data at scale for the entire literature. Um, so looking forward, there are a few applications that I think this is going to support, and I want to give you uh, a few examples of what these applications look like. Uh, the first one, obviously, is uh, generating graphs uh, based on citations. So this is an example of something we have today. Um, it's a co-author graph for an individual researcher. You can use a Sparkle endpoint, and you can directly generate uh, this graph in your browser uh, using the uh, graph visualization plugin on our um, query service. Once we have uh, the entire corpus of the Zika literature in Wikidata, we can also start looking at uh, you know, uh, who, who is the most cited author. We can look at like, uh, properties of this network, uh, and we can easily identify who are the big players uh, um, active in this field. There's a uh, a whole set of uh, really exciting developments that are happening independently on the Wikimedia Foundation. They are driven primarily by two separate teams. Uh, um, one project is called Strap Hit, and the other project is called the Content Mine. You may have heard about the Content Mine. Um, and basically, these two projects are trying to uh, scrape statements from the literature 
uh, and extract them with the sources that back these statements and store them into Wikidata. So um, whether it's uh, statements that are missing from, uh, from Wikidata or statements that exist but don't have a, a good source, these two projects are working to provide a, a machine-based solutions going through the literature and provide to curators the ability to decide whether something goes or not, goes or, or doesn't go into, um, into Wikidata. And finally, I thought I'd say a few words uh, about uh, centralization, right? Um, so yes, we're all for evil centralizing of, uh, of data. I think yesterday's talk was really fascinating in that respect. Uh, uh, it's true that Wikidata and Wikipedia uh, try and centralize a, a good deal of this content, uh, and there are reasons that are mostly related to curation discoverability, why we think this is important. Uh, at the same time, I wanted to flag the fact that uh, we don't need to ingest the entire linked data uh, ecosystem into our projects. And in fact, the community is very reluctant to do so because we don't want to turn Wikidata into a giant dump of uh, data that nobody can curate and, uh, and, and annotate, right? So it's a very serious problem about uh, uh, finding the right balance uh, in scale between what's needed uh, for the project to express all this information and the legitimate concerns from the community curating this data. So um, something that's happening right now that I think is very exciting is the fact that Wikidata is investing a lot of resources, not so much into ingestion of this data, but in representing the mappings between what exists in Wikidata and what exists out there. And this is one of my favorite examples. Um, it's uh, a tool that was developed by Magnus Mansky, um, and it's basically a tool for crowdsourcing, entity matching, and disambiguation. Uh, the way in which this works is that it takes uh, all the entities that exist on Wikipedia, and then it takes a, a list of famous catalogs. It could be like the, uh, you know, this is a database of uh, um, uh, women visual artists. There are all sort of like a bibliographic databases you can think about. And this tool will provide uh, some automated matching using heuristics in some cases, uh, or it will use uh, um, identifiers when they exist. When they don't exist, it will ask, uh, um, a user basically to go ahead and manually check these individual entries to see if they're about the same person. And this tool in itself has been providing uh, an incredible uh, source of uh, high quality data that is really hard to find uh, anywhere else unless you have a population of curators who are willing to do this. And just to give you a sense of uh, the scale of this, we're getting about uh, a thousand mappings um, added or curated uh, on a daily basis just from this tool. So um, in, in a month we have uh, 30,000 new mappings added uh, just by people using this game. Um, and it's a pretty fun game that you can try to if you're willing to crowdsource um, uh, this, this task. Going forward, uh, if, we, if we believe that this vision of uh, connecting the citation and bibliographic layer with the uh, curated the knowledge layer in, in the open, what are opportunities that we could have for understanding how these two types of, uh, of information um, uh, interact? Well, there are many types of queries that will be possible uh, at the push of a button uh, by using a query service, using a Sparkle endpoint. This is just an example of uh, queries that one day we'll be able to answer. So give me all statements citing a New York Times article. Give me a list of the most popular scholarly journals used as citations for statements for any item in the subclass of economics. Give me all statements citing one of the works of Joseph Stiglitz. Give me all statements citing journal articles by physicists at Oxford universities or uh, physicists who used to be at Oxford universities who are dead today. Um, give me all statements citing journal articles that was retracted. I want to spend a few words on this one specifically because uh, one of the problems that we have on Wikipedia that goes back to the issue of the propagation of biases or errors uh, uh, in a mechanical way is that uh, if at some point uh, some information is on Wikipedia is based on a paper that was retracted, good luck correcting all of the usage uh, of this data downstream unless you have a, an effective mechanism of propagating this changing, this changes at the, at the very entry uh, level of the system. So having this data 
in Wikidata where they can be curated means that we'll be able to automatically flag all the statements that are backed uh, by, um, by a paper that's been retracted and correct the information that propagates to the rest of the linked data ecosystem. That's a pretty big deal and that's something that uh, will be possible if we start having this data in the system. And obviously we can also look at like a statement citing a source that itself is citing a journal article that was retracted and so on and so forth. So I have some good remarks. I could just spend more time talking about each of these, uh, of these projects uh, uh, and I want to allow some time for uh, additional questions. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing and what needs to happen here. Um, so we're, we're adding a curation layer that is uh, going to produce a new type of knowledge. So linked open knowledge is collaboratively edited, not just edited by a few experts in a field, but really curated by a large set of uh, experts and citizens and machines. Um, and we're doing this in the open so that this data can be reused by everyone. And we're using, we're using this data uh, to so like de-silo individual linked open data repositories and really create a, um, a repository of any entity that you can name. Now, for this to happen, there is something critical that we need, and that's the fact that the basic information, bibliographic uh, and, and citation data, needs to be made available to our communities in you know, to be able to produce this kind of knowledge. And now, it's critical that publishers and metadata provider, providers realize that by holding back this data that should be in the public domain, uh, you're not making this kind of open knowledge possible. Basically, holding back information that scientists, citizens, patients, students really need and that we hold back uh, and we monetize uh, because of the way in which the current system works. So that's something I want you to think about um, when you hear about uh, releasing some data sets. That's the kind of data we need in order to make this, this project possible. And people from Scopus and Thomson Reuters know our feelings. We can have drinks afterwards. <laughs> So with that, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna conclude and say that we're continuing this effort and we have uh, um, an ongoing interest from uh, different communities. We're gonna host the next event uh, in California in January 2017. So if you're interested in joining us, this is gonna be the occasion where you can contribute to this project. And with that, I wanna thank you and I'll be happy to take any questions. This is very nice. Uh, so can a citation point to a paper that's not available to everybody as a PDF that you can then go read? It can. So the question is uh, if a statement can use a citation to a paper that is not accessible as a PDF. So Wikipedia and Wikidata have uh, follow this policy that uh, we're not just citing the open access literature, right? So in order to provide a, a comprehensive uh, set of uh, references for any topic that you can think of, uh, we cannot just restrict ourselves uh, to uh, the open access literature. Um, as a result of this, if you go through existing references on Wikipedia, you will find that the vast majority is still from a um, closed um, Close, pay, close, close access uh, uh, papers. Um, we can represent uh, this data in Wikidata, make sure that the bibliographic entries are, are there and are correct. And we can also work with our communities to identify any author version uh, of the same documents that is publicly available. But yes, to your, to, uh, your question, uh, this is not restricted to uh, PDFs that are publicly accessible. Hi, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your strategy and, and your approach then to liberate um, public domain bibliographic and citation data. What, what are your main approaches at this point? Sure, yeah. Um, strategy, well, I think I, I'm just starting by publicly shaming people uh, at all the conferences that I'm invited to. Um, that's a, maybe not a strategy that's gonna scale, but, <laughs> but the, um, I, I guess what we're doing is that, uh, so we're working with these different teams uh, uh, that are uh, generating this data uh, and they're um, confident they can release it in the open. And we can basically start by producing research objects like the Zika uh, corpus that we believe can provide a, a compelling proof of concept of what this could look like. So uh, my experience by being in the open science open access movement is that uh, 
Uh, the discussion is shifting uh, quite quickly, specifically thanks to uh, all the attention around a uh, yeah, major public health crisis. This is really one compelling case where uh, the global community is realizing we need to do something about um, about uh, uh, about these papers. Um, the fact that uh, there was no information accessible in local languages to practitioners in the field in West Africa in 2014 uh, is just to me the best example of what's broken with the current system. So I don't have a strategy yet, and there are many people um, in in this movement uh, who have different ideas about how to get there. Um, I think what we want to do is to, to work with partners um, and see uh, if there are partners that are willing to release more and more of this data in the open and start building and adding value to this data uh, in hope that eventually everybody will join and will realize that we don't need to uh, monetize this data going forward. Hi there, love the talk. Uh, most of the people in this room are working on platforms that publish information about people and in some cases their research outputs in clean, uh, machine readable formats with institutional provenance. Are there opportunities to take information about people and their work and push that into Wikidata? Yeah, so the question is uh, if there's any attempt uh, to store into Wikidata information about people. Imagine you're referring to researchers primarily, right? Yeah. Um, so as part of this project, we started, uh, um, since we're, we're ingesting data uh, about authors, in the case of uh, the uh, Zika corpus, but also in other areas that we're experimenting with, um, we're creating entries about uh, individual authors. Um, I don't have the data handy, but we have uh, already a pretty large number of author, like items about authors with all the corresponding identifiers, um, ORC identifiers, Scopus IDs, et cetera, et cetera, when they're available. Um, and so the answer is yes, uh, this is already happening. The example I mentioned before of a um, co-citation graph is actually using uh, author information that already exists in the system. Hi, um, here. <laughs> I uh, love your, loved your talk. Um, I kind of think I can guess the answer to my question, but I want to ask it anyway. <laughs> uh, what's your opinion about uh, data repositories and DOIs for data? Have you have any experience with that? Sure, yes. Uh, mostly my, my experience has been uh, from a data consumer, I guess, from a data consumer and researcher perspective, but also I've been involved in many open data release projects, uh, and I've been experiencing the pain that people have when they don't quite get the value of releasing uh, a data set if it's not citable or if it doesn't become a first class citizen in terms of a citable object. So um, I don't know what the question really is about, but yes, if it's about like a, uh, whether DOIs are a good mechanism by which we should be referencing um, open data sets, by all means, this is the only viable solution we have today uh, to use a currency that is you know, known by researchers uh, and that we can piggyback uh, for any other type of uh, um, scholarly object that is not just a paper data sets uh, or a research code, et cetera. Okay, Mac. Thank you for your talk. Um, I was hoping that you could talk a little bit more <clears throat> about how some of these other platforms, which uh, the earlier question was aimed at, might be able to push data into your experiments. One of the fascinating things that I think about the, about the in, entire effort is that there is a massive opening up of how claims are being made and shared, where they're coming from, who can make them. We have these territories by which there are walls or doors to enter in, and you need to be part of that membership, part of that tribe in order to make a claim for it to be considered valid. Um, and the issue is that there are all of these different territories that aren't linked up together. Um, this represents an opportunity to start bringing all of these claims into one space and letting the consumers decide which claims are more, most useful to their needs. Um, I understand you have a few um, integrations or partners by which you're bringing data in already, um, such as DataCite, Crossref, et cetera, um, and they represent perhaps a community, mostly of publisher members, but there are other communities out there, the researchers, the curators, libraries, et cetera. Um, so if you could talk more about those plans. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess there are many possible ways in which uh, we can help uh, other communities like uh, interface with Wikidata. Uh, depending on the nature of these communities, depends if they're um, ID providers, uh, metadata providers, or um, content curators, it will be different strategies. Um, I think the fastest way to get not so much uh, data ingested into Wikidata, but the identifiers mapped would be to work with some of the tools like the one that I mentioned, so um, the mix and match tool uh, that basically would allow, as long as you have a set of identifiers uh, that in a given instance um, are available and accessible, um, just make sure that these identifiers can be mapped to whatever exists in Wikidata. Um, that sounds like a, it's something that's really cheap to do and will get you immediately the um, the, 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 the link, the cross-linking between these two repositories that can then lead to additional information extraction if needed between the two systems. So I think that's the, uh, that's the first uh, obvious thing to try. And we're also willing to talk about, uh, uh, again, if there are entire corpora um, or ideas around curation of data uh, that you have in your repository that you think might be a good fit for, uh, for Wikidata. Um, I think there are also other layers at the partnership level uh, or community level that we can explore. But definitely starting with like just mapping identifiers is something most straightforward uh, entry point. Yeah, so the one thing we keep hearing, the one thing we keep hearing from uh, both the, uh, the tech team and the community, again, is the fact that they don't want to see like a terabytes of data dumped into, into the system, right? So um, it looks like the community is now open and by and large uh, interested in this idea of mapping what we have uh, with scholarly resources and research information management systems. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to ingest tomorrow 7 million DOIs uh, overnight uh, and <laughs> without, yeah, without uh, giving notice to the community. So yes, by all means, let's talk about uh, what data you have uh, and what, what can be done with it. Thank you so much. Thank you.